Hello my loves, welcome back to another episode of Unfollowing Mum. How are we this week? How have things been going? This is going to be a solo episode today and I'm going to be talking to you about birthdays. I think I mentioned a few episodes ago, if you haven't heard that yet you can go back and listen to those or this could just be a standalone about birthdays and how complicated they are when you've had a dysfunctional family upbringing or you're estranged. I think there are so many different layers to birthdays and I wanted to talk about that today. So let's take a deep breath and jump into it. Deep breath was totally more for me than it was for you because I hate birthdays, more specifically my birthday. And I'm going to start with talking about my birthday and how I feel around that. And then I'm going to move on to talking about my kids' birthdays, which I'm hoping will be relatable for a lot of you. But my birthday is in January. And this year, I didn't post about it. I didn't tell anyone about it. And it's the first time I haven't. And that actually felt really right for me. Usually, I'll try and do the whole, you know, pop a social media post up and be like, it's my birthday. And I just hate it. I hate my birthday with a fiery passion and this has been a really common thread that I have found amongst people who are either estranged or who've had a really dysfunctional family life to begin with and there are the obvious reasons for it you know with estrangement it's at a time when either there's the potential birthday card looming or you know if you're feeling distressed about your estrangement and it's not a position that you wanted to be in then there's the aspect of well I've not got family talking to me I've not got family sending me birthday messages maybe you don't want those for me this year I actually found it really complicated surrounding the estrangement it's the first year that I've kind of thought I know hand on heart and I was talking about this in my skills training session when I was doing my therapist training and it came up in skills because I actually had a skills training session which if you don't know what that is it is quite literally what it says on the box you sit and you practice your skills with each other so you essentially have a go at being each other's therapists and it's great it's such a an eye-opening experience and really valuable I wish I'd had a similar experience with coaching but I didn't. Um, but I think it's a really valuable side of things to be able to practice being each of the therapists in a safe space. And it was on my birthday. And I hadn't told anybody it was my birthday. But when I sat down in the chair, I was like, what can I bring to this session as the helpy, as the person who is the one that's meant to be the client, if you like? What can I bring? And I just started talking about how much I feel these really complicated feelings around my birthday. So I know hand on heart without a shadow of doubt that I do not want contact from my mum, from my stepmom. I don't want contact from any of them on my birthday. I don't want a birthday card. I don't want anything. And yet there's this really complicated part of me that sits in this space saying, but I don't want that contact. I've made that quite clear. I've chosen to have no contact. The thought of a card coming through the post literally sends a shiver down my back and makes me feel a bit queasy. I don't want it. But it's almost like in not receiving it, there's that rejection complex. And it's really complicated because there's almost like that proof that in me saying, don't contact me, there's that acceptance of that and God, how easy was it to discard me? And it's such a weird feeling because you're sat almost like you're wa like warring with two parts of yourself. One part who's very clear on what they want in this situation and does not want contact. And another part who's going, yeah, I don't want contact, but the fact that you haven't made the effort to contact is such bullshit. And yet, if that effort was made, it would feel like an attack. It's such a weird and complicated feeling and I spoke to some friends about it who are estranged who were like, do you know what, you've just voiced exactly how I feel because I too do not want contact. In fact, I did the first year after we were estranged. Um, I think it was the first year or maybe actually it was the second year and the first year I got nothing. I think it was the first year I got this card and it was one of those like fold out big massive birthday cards to my daughter and my mum never did birthday cards and it was all about how even if you can't be with her you're so proud of her and I read through the subtle subtext and was like oh my god this is so 
intrusive and it really made me angry. I felt a lot of anger around it because how dare she. I equally felt real sadness around it. It was an attempt at guilting me. It felt like an attack and I don't want that. But simultaneously, it feels almost somewhat like a reminder that I was easy to discard or easy to just say, oh, well, I've tried once and she didn't respond. And, you know, ironically, I'm like, you're talking about childhood abuse on a podcast. This person is definitely not going to reach out to you and you don't want them to. And yet there's still that inner child part of me. And that's where I'm convinced this sits. And I think it links back to my experiences with my dad, which some of you may or may not relate to. I think we've talked about this briefly on the podcast before, but my dad was very much what you think of when you think of an absent father. My parents got divorced just after I turned four. He went off with his mistress at the time, and it was very much that kind of classic story of, I've created a new life, I've got a partner, and you don't fit into that. So I kind of became this othered part. That's very much how it was positioned to me when I was growing up, certainly by my mum. And you know, his actions kind of supported that. I don't remember much of my time between the age of four and seven, but I do remember kind of flashes of maybe seeing him at brief times. I don't know if maybe I was a little bit older even because I just don't have very clear memories of that time. When I talk about not remembering things very well, I'm meaning like flashes of snow and a swing in a tree somewhere. And I know that I was with him at that time. I believe I was in Scotland, which is where his partner was from, but Lord knows when I was there, what we were doing, whether we were visiting. I think I remember seeing her family at some point, but again, that could have been when I was a bit older. It's all very fractured because it was such a difficult time for me. And I just remember always feeling like I was very much a second part or a nuisance or just unwanted really which worked beautifully for my mum and her enmeshed tendencies I mean that that was an ideal setup because there was me trying to find this extra figure in my life when I'd been discarded by my dad and he really didn't want me and my mum was only too happy to play into that role and to really create this fractured dynamic between us or to aid him in creating it and to create an additional closeness between myself and her. But I just remember there were so many occasions when I was little that, in fact, I'm saying that, I'm saying I just remember there were so many occasions. I've been told of so many occasions and I remember a couple where I would talk to him about my birthday party and I would say, you know, it's my birthday coming up. And I think actually I'm saying I remember a couple, I think it was one, you know, we've knocked it down from, I remember so many occasions to the actuality of I've been told of so many occasions and I remember one. But I do remember this one time in particular, which kind of adds credit to the other times that you're told about when you know that this happened and I was so excited to have this birthday party it was in like a little school disco area and my mum had hired it out and I was really excited and I remember weeks and weeks in advance giving my dad the details my mum giving my dad the details and him saying yeah yeah I'm gonna be there and I remember my mum at the time saying don't you know like don't be too over excited about daddy coming because you know you might get a bit busy with work and this had happened before from what I can understand, but you see where this is going. He didn't turn up or he would turn up to a birthday party like with 15 minutes left and tell me as a child, you gave me the wrong time and it would spoil the whole party and just be a real dampener on the whole experience because there was this young girl who up until my dad left, I was very much a daddy's girl and all of a sudden, he can't even be bothered to show up to a birthday party. And I think that is a huge part of where this feeling of being discarded comes from, because it's just a reminder again of both parents not really fulfilling the obligation that they should have done, even though with this particular parent, it's my choice that she doesn't get in touch with me and I really don't want her to. There is still that inner child that sat there going, well, neither of them are really bothered whether they're in touch with you, are they? And I mean, in fairness, my dad's dead. So like, you know, <laughs> probably a bit difficult for him to get in touch. But this, the point still stands. The point still stands. And there might be some of you listening to this thinking, no, this one's not hitting for me. I don't feel that way at all. I literally just do not want this person to get in touch with me. Or there might be somebody listening to it saying, mm, no, I really relate with the part about wanting them to get in touch with you, but them not bothering. Or you could be like me, kind of sat in that space where you know you don't want the contact, where you feel safer without the contact. 
but equally there's that kind of inner wound that is sat there being prodded a bit around your birthday and I think this is another reason that I really struggle with my birthday as a whole and why it's a time that I'm just not a fan of. I feel like I have a real fear of disappointment around my birthday and again that links very much back to my dad just never bothering to show up, it was never important, it was always seen as a bit of an inconvenience really and my mum would love to say to me how awful January birthdays were because no one could be bothered. They'd had Christmas and that was really important in our home. There was no back and forth between parents' houses, even when I was visiting my dad, which I did for a period of time at Christmas. There was no back and forth. There was no, oh, you have one Christmas and I'll have another Christmas, because to my mum, Christmas was this massive, massive event and she needed to be centred in it. So she would always say, she will be with me at Christmas, and that is not a discussion. I was never asked where I wanted to go, but it was always very much she will be with me, we will celebrate a big fancy Christmas together. And then when it came to my birthday, which is the 9th of January, afterwards it would be, oh, it's so difficult when you've got a January birthday because everybody's just had Christmas and they love it. And I, I even find myself saying this now, and Edith's birthday is also in January. And I even find myself saying, oh, you know, January birthdays are difficult because everybody's been really busy over Christmas. And maybe that's something on reflection that I need to challenge within myself because I don't want her to grow up with that message that it's just not important or it's an inconvenience because that was so my birthday. Anything surrounding my birthday felt like an inconvenience, felt like I was about to be let down. But as so many of you, I am sure, will relate to, there was this feeling of guilt having that fear of being let down, of having that feeling that regardless of how much effort one person had gone to, my mum, I didn't feel like I was whole because my dad hadn't gone to any effort and because my dad had just not bothered to turn up. And there was this real feeling of guilt, especially when I was younger and take the birthday party, for example, that I do remember. I remember being so upset about that and them having an argument. I think there was a little upstairs part and I'd gone upstairs and was just sat there. And I remember my mum being really agitated and like, all of your friends are here. I've put all of this on for you. Why are you not spending time enjoying yourself you're allowing him to ruin it he ruins everything and just that real oversharing and not considering a child's emotions when you're allowed to be disappointed when one of the most important people in your life doesn't come through for you I think this was my ninth birthday you know that to me is a time Edith's just turned nine. Oh god I'm having all the realizations on this podcast episode Edith's just turned nine so that could explain why I found this birthday in particular quite difficult and we'll come to that in a minute but I think I should have been at that point allowed to express those emotions and there should have been an adult there to hold that space for me and say yes this is so disappointing that dad's chosen not to turn up or he's ended up turning up with like five minutes to go and I think if I'm not mistaken he'd gone to visit friends in the town like it was that unimportant to him that he would just made a quick detour trip to go and see his rugby pals and then turned up to my birthday party nearly two hours late and it was only a two hour party. It was just such a fucked up situation and that really summarised my relationship with my dad, just not showing up, just not being bothered, just being dismissive of me. And the disappointment around that then felt like a betrayal of my mum. The disappointment around that then felt like I was further letting her down by not appreciating all of her hard work. And when I think about my own kids now, yes, I want them to be grateful that I've perhaps spent money and time and energy on making them a nice birthday party. But I don't need them to bow down to me over that. I don't need them to express it at the detriment of other things you know if they're having a birthday party and they fall over and bang their knee I'm not going to get cross with them because they're not enjoying themselves enough for my liking or to give me that feeling of importance and satisfaction that I've I've made this birthday party but that was my upbringing and it goes back to that debt mindset versus gratitude that we talk about so often on the podcast where my mum really felt like she was owed because she was the parent who'd had to step forward and do things and that can't have been easy I'm not diminishing that at all it can't have been easy for her to have gone from having a relatively wealthy husband who took care of the finances and who basically allowed her to be a part-time worker and 
and you know organize lunches and organize dinners and do all sorts of nice things and to have that freedom and that financial freedom to then going back to having to work full time whilst managing the expectations of a child whilst having to manage everything financially because he wasn't offering the help that she needed that must have been really difficult but two truths can coexist yes that was really difficult but that wasn't my responsibility as a little girl who was sat upstairs with a roller skates on at a disco party just really fucking sad that her dad hadn't turned up when he'd promised to and there were so many situations when I dig into it because I do try not to think too much about those situations but when I dig into it there are so many situations that I do remember that were very similar to that and more that I have been told about especially from my mum who would almost delight in telling me about the ways in which my dad failed at being a dad (laughs) so yeah there's a lot of feelings that come up for me around birthdays and I do find it a really difficult time period to feel like I'm going to celebrate myself as well I think there's like I said there's that guilt there there's that fear of abandonment or fear of disappointment and then there's also that feeling I guess of not wanting to celebrate yourself especially if you had a toxic parent because that detracts from that parent and I have spoken to so many people be they clients who sit across me and who I talk to about their toxic experience with parents or be that people within the unfollowing mum community who say that their birthdays were almost like a personal affront to their toxic parent because how dare the attention be on you and that was an experience that I didn't necessarily have but that I've had reflected to me so many times for me it felt more like my mum had to be involved in the experience almost like a sharing of the attention so she wasn't necessarily trying to take the attention away from me but there would be a sharing of attention and as I got older I remember I hated school and I've talked before about having like 20% attendance in my last couple of years I remember very much it being my birthday and just sort of saying I don't want to go into school today and mum saying well I can't take a day off work and me saying it's okay I'll stay at home and it was just all right okay you stay at home and do nothing then that's fine and I did and I probably enjoyed those birthdays where I was alone and quiet and had aged out of that birthday party experience my dad hadn't quite died but he wouldn't ring me um, for my later birthdays so again there's those messages of just not being important but wanting to be important but just not trusting that if I allowed myself to acknowledge the want to have my birthday celebrated then I was probably going to get hurt about it and I think that's so sad and it has carried with me into my adulthood where I still have that kind of oh I don't really want to bother with it I would much rather just let the day pass I love the way that my family respect that they will Adam in particular will get me some lovely presents that he knows that I will really enjoy things that he knows I probably wouldn't ask for And then he will let me just not make a big fuss of it. We'll have a takeaway on the sofa on an evening. He knows he wouldn't dream of kind of organising a big surprise party or anything like that because he knows I hate it. And I think that that, having that respect for that and that understanding that I'm not really a big birthday person. Yes, I like to go out and maybe have a lunch, just the two of us. Or I'd like to go for a meal, just the two of us. But I don't want like a big fuss. I don't want a big run up of you know oh it's your birthday in a week let's just mention it on a minimal angle and this is a conversation that I was having with Edith because she was very much like do you know what mum your birthday is coming and then guess what happens and it was almost like it's let's get it out the way quickly because it's her birthday shortly afterwards she's in the 25th of January and she was so funny because she was like you know what mum when we get your birthday out of the way it's mine and I loved that for her that she was so excited about that and I wanted to really encourage that excitement and I loved seeing that through her but moving away from how I feel about my birthday I also have some really complicated feelings about the kids birthdays and funnily enough Edith's more so than the boys in the run-up to Edith's birthdays I was finding it quite difficult to sleep this time in particular I think I've just had that earlier realization on this episode that it's her ninth birthday and that's probably one of my worst memories of a birthday and 
I really was finding it difficult to sleep. I was having nightmares and my nightmares were that I would wake up on the morning and forget her birthday because I felt like I hadn't really organised much. Like this year she hasn't had a birthday party yet and she has asked for one but we've not necessarily had the time and then there's the guilt around that and then she's doing football on a weekend and I've had to explain she'll have to miss that and she didn't want to and it just got a little bit messy and I started to think well, what if she thinks we don't care what if she thinks it's not important and all these very normal parenting feelings coming up but really amplified by my own feeling of never being cared about surrounding my birthday but yeah, during the weeks running up to Edith's birthday, I found myself having nightmares, which nightmares tend to be my kind of go-to when I'm stressed. It's like my brain goes, you've got shit to process. We're going to try and do it while you sleep. Oh dear Lord, that's not fun shit to process. So now it's going to be a nightmare. We're just going to chuck that in there because I'm sure you can function better if you're not sleeping. I'm sure it'll help the stress. It's a really counterproductive way of my noggin trying to do things, but that's what it does. And these nightmares were all, like I say, surrounding not knowing whether or not I would forget her birthday. What if we woke up on the morning and had forgotten to wrap the presents? What if we woke up on the morning and I just, I didn't say happy birthday to her and she was so distraught or really hurt? What, what if it was an awful experience? And I think that's really telling that that's kind of where my brain went to because there was no way that I was going to do that. There was no way this kid was going to let me do that either. You know, I mean, like Edith was all up about her birthday just before Christmas. She was like, when we get this out the way, it's time for my birthday. And I loved that. And I loved that, you know, in the, the week before she was so excited and she kept saying to me, how many days to my birthday? That's how it should be. And I loved that for her. But I think my little inner child felt quite sad for me that that was taken from me and that's okay we can process the two things and still be wonderfully present for our children and find healing in watching them have these really positive experiences that we perhaps didn't have whether it's a birthday whether it's an experience that is triggering for you it could be going to a zoo it could be anything watching your children's joy can be so healing whilst also creating certain feelings of sadness in your own inner child. And that's so okay. That doesn't make you a bad parent for finding that difficult and for sitting with that and going, that's really sad that I didn't get that opportunity and that my parents let me down. For me, what I find myself doing around the kids' birthdays is either stepping into them and trying to overdo it and overcompensate and be like, let's have a birthday party, let's do this, let's do that. Or I almost pull back a little bit. And I think that's what I've done this time with Edith's birthday because I've still not organized her a birthday party. And I do think there's an element of having pulled back a little bit there, coupled with the complications of she's doing football now. How are we going to fit this in? Every week that I suggest there's something going on or uh, someone else has booked it for a birthday party and that's what's going to happen. And I'd spoken to her about it. She was like, yeah, I'd quite like a birthday party. I'd like a sleepover sleepovers are a big old red flag for me and I'm not really a big fan of them. I was far too enmeshed with my mum to ever go for a sleepover at anyone's house. I would just cry and cry to go home and there were a few times when we tried to get me to go for a sleepover and now I think back on it I'm like why would we even try it when I was saying I don't want to do this I don't think that I will be comfortable doing this why are you even trying to send me to a stranger's house to make me sleep over to build my confidence I can tell you as someone who is a qualified empowerment coach who works with people to build confidence every single day that ain't it like yes you have to step out of your comfort zone in order to build confidence but when you are a child that isn't stepping out of your comfort zone that is like launching you outside of your comfort zone into a different time zone and then trying to bring you back again that's just not helpful and I remember occasions where I would be encouraged to go for sleepovers, one in particular where I'd woken up in the middle of the night really frightened. I think I was frightened that I'd wet the bed or I was frightened that I would be left and I wouldn't be able to find my way home and lots of different feelings that would come up for little Harriet. And I remember walking into my friend's parents' bedroom and the mum kind of sat up and was like, oh, are you okay? And the dad just rolled over and was like, what do you think you're doing? And I was, his children obviously just didn't come in his room, but it was like horrifying 
as a child and there are so many reports as well with sleepovers about things that go wrong with people being molested and I know that's a triggering um, experience for so many people who have been in that position. Sleepovers just don't sit with me and I would prefer not to have her friends over for a sleepover. I have a couple of friends who their kids have stayed for sleepovers but we very much have a oak like an open house understanding of they can come back anytime let's see how we get on but if you need to come and pick them up I can bring them back at two in the morning like it's just not a drama we're all good we know each other we spend loads of time together it'll be fine and that I think is a comfort level and each parent's got to decide it differently but for me I just didn't particularly want a group of little girls staying over here and just not really knowing how that was going to go and not knowing them or their parents particularly well. So I'd said, look, I don't think that's going to be a good idea. Why don't we just have a group of friends over for the day? They can come over. We have a hot tub. They can get in the hot tub. You know, we can have a hot tub party. We can do different things. Loads of fun, exciting things to be doing at home. And that was what we'd planned. And then a few days beforehand, she changed her mind and was like, I want to go to the local agility park. And I was like, shit. (laughs) brilliant that is going to cost an absolute fortune and I'm not sure that that is going to work for us at this moment in time so we sat down and had a talk about it but there was that guilt around I've got it in my mind that I'm doing this and now she's asking for this and I'm not providing that now what if that means that her birthday is going to be a bad memory for her and it's such a silly thing to feel and yet so very real for you as a parent to feel like what what if what if they hate this what if they have this really bad experience or they think I didn't do enough for them and this would probably be one of the first years she's not had a birthday party apart from covid because they often do and I kind of thought we'd grown out of this phase now because like a lot of parents I'm really not a big fan of birthday parties they're expensive they're a faff it's all lots of awkward small talk and of course it surrounds birthdays but you do it because you want your kids to have the best time possible so when she suggested this that's probably why she's not ended up having the party that she wanted yet and it might be that I organize later on in the year when we aren't quite as busy for something to happen so that she knows that that's important but I feel like I really over analyze all of the things surrounding birthdays And the pressure of not passing that on to your kids is absolutely huge because I want them to feel so joyful and I want them to have the best experiences. But it can be really triggering for me and that's quite difficult to make your peace with. So how do you feel about birthdays? Did you relate to any of this? Do you feel that birthdays are a complicated time for you or have you found something that works for allowing you to step back into enjoying your birthday if you used to have negative experiences growing up? Is it something that you have managed to reclaim? You can send me an email at harriet at tobyandrew.com or you can get in touch with me via at tobyandrew on Instagram or TikTok or at unfollowingmum on TikTok and Instagram as well. You let me know, let me know how you feel about birthdays and how this sat with you. Are birthdays something that you find complicated if you had experiences? What were your experiences surrounding birthdays? A slightly shorter one from me this week and next week I want to talk to you about endings. It's something that I did in one of my therapy training sessions. We discussed our relationship with endings and my god was it a difficult session. Everybody had said how difficult they found that session and how conflicting their emotions were. So my relationships with endings are not good, as I'm sure you can imagine. And I think that in particular was a session that really sat forward for me. And there were a few other people on the course who are estranged from their parents as well. See, this is the thing, as I keep telling you, so many of us think that we're so alone in this. And yet it is such a common experience for people to either have family dysfunction, where they have low contact relationships, or to be completely estranged. So common that of a group of nine, there are four of us, four of us, almost half, I mean, you know, unless you like split a person, there were 10 of us originally, but almost half of us are estranged. 
or have a low contact situation with our family because it's dysfunctional and in particular our parents are difficult and I think that speaks volumes but endings was the one thing that all four of us agreed really struck with us and our endings of relationships and I think that's something that is worth talking about. Thank you so much for listening guys and I will speak to you again next week. Bye.